Tesla currently has some of the most efficient and capable electric vehicles on the market, especially considering the costs. Since Elon Musk first published his master plan for the company's roadmap in 2006, referencing the appropriate steps that Tesla had to carry by starting with a high-priced low-volume vehicle and riding the cost structure to work their way down in price while growing volume at each phase, the company has come a long way. The battery pack, which can cost thousands of dollars, is still the most expensive component of an electric vehicle. According to Bloomberg New Energy Finance, the average lithium-ion battery pack costs over $1,100 per kilowatt hour in 2010, but by 2020, the volume weighted price for battery electric vehicles was just $126 per kilowatt hour, a significant decrease. Tesla's battery pack costs may be marginally less currently. But a Model 3 battery could cost close to $7,000 at $126 per kilowatt hour. However, at Tesla's Battery Day event last year, the company announced intentions to develop a new type of battery cell, the 4680. In this video, we will learn how the low cost of Tesla's new and improved 4680 battery cell will boost the company's profitability. But first, if this is your first visit to our Smart Stocks Academy channel, please accept my warmest greetings. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell next to it to be the first to know when a new video like this is released. So if you're ready, let's get to the topic. While the objective of this cell is to lower battery costs below $100 per kilowatt hour, a critical benchmark that is said to make battery electric vehicles more affordable than gas cars even on sticker price, the 4680 has the potential to radically revolutionize Tesla and the electric vehicle industry. Tesla has used the 18650 form factor for the Model S and X, but they had collaborated with Panasonic to develop the 2170 cell, which is manufactured at the Giga Nevada factory, and the 2170 form factor is used in the US-made Model 3 and Model Y. The Giga Nevada facility produces 35 gigawatt hours of electricity per year, which is distributed among 13 battery manufacturing lines. This 35 gigawatt hour is enough to power all of Tesla's vehicles built in the United States, as well as stationary battery packs. We can estimate that the 35 gigawatt hour equates to about 500,000 mid-sized vehicles like the 3 and 4, which is roughly the size of Tesla's entire company in 2020. Tesla would gladly accept hundreds of gigawatt hours of 2170 cells if they came upon them by chance. The 2170 design, on the other hand, is at least 5 years old and hasn't been able to scale up quickly enough to meet Tesla's demand. Even Panasonic, which has a strong feel on the market and is an expert at creating batteries as one of the world's leading battery makers, looks to have badly misjudged electric car demand just 3 years ago in 2018. They predicted that global electric vehicle demand will reach 3 million units by 2026. However, it is now 2022 and we have already crossed 3 million units. By 2025, Ark Invest, a forward-thinking investment organization, predicts 40 million units. Tesla has recognized this and met me, but instead of investing in and trying to scale up old technology, they have been working on their own new 4680 battery cell which will hit the market this year and is purposely built for true mass market scaling. By simply modifying the form factor, Tesla's 4680 battery cell is optimized for both range and cost reduction. However, as a result of this shift, Tesla requires a new number of new inventions to maintain and in many cases improve the performance of this new battery cell. For example, as the diameter of the battery grows greater, it becomes harder to cool it. Thus, Tesla has found out how to keep charging rates consistent while also dissipating heat, allowing them to employ this larger cylindrical battery type. Tesla is also employing their new tablet design, which essentially replaces a single tab with a full layer of tabs, reducing heat generation by reducing the distance electrons must travel inside a battery. Tesla is able to achieve a 56% reduction in battery cell costs when paired with its other advances in cathode and anode designs cell manufacturer, and structural battery packs. It is vital to remember that most competitors are still far behind Tesla in terms of efficiency, cost, and performance. 
most of them don't build their own battery cells, so they don't have the advantage of engineering the cells to be truly integrated as part of the vehicle and work as a single integrated unit, as we see with Tesla's structural battery pack. But the rate at which Tesla can scale its battery production lines will be almost as crucial as all of these changes. Fortunately, these enhancements are built with manufacturability in mind. These developments in the battery cell itself are merely a bonus, albeit a significant one. However, as previously said, if Tesla had been able to obtain an abundance of 2170 cells, it would have been beneficial as well. Manufacturing speed will be a game changer, and advances in each component of the battery will allow the manufacturing speed to increase along with the number of gigawatt hours the company can produce. Because expanding production alone can assist to substantially cut costs, manufacturability is at the forefront. According to ARK Invest, battery costs follow Wright's law, a cost decline model in which the cost reduces by a particular percentage for every cumulative doubling in the amount of battery energy produced, and at the time it takes for a cost to drop is immaterial. For example, there is no need to wait two years for costs to drop by 15%. According to Wright's law, if manufacturing output can double every two years, battery costs will double every two years, regardless of time. As a result, Tesla is focused on having their battery lines functioning at exceptionally high rates and volumes, which will directly convert into cheaper cost vehicles for consumers. Last year, during Tesla's Battery Day event, they announced the launch of a pilot program in Fremont for a 10 gigawatt hour production line. The yield was slow at the time, but Tesla has made major engineering adjustments in the previous year to ensure that yield remains high enough at high speeds. What is more interesting is that this one pilot line will account for almost a third of Giga Nevada's 2020 production. Tesla's actual battery lines will have a capacity of 20 gigawatt hours per line, which is seven times that of the existing Giga Nevada lines, which have 13 at the factory. Tesla appears to be aiming for five production lines worldwide by 2023 in order to produce 100 gigawatt hours of battery energy with the 4680. Giga Texas will be supplied with 4680 batteries using the current 10 gigawatt hour pilot line, at least until it is ready to make its own. Tesla has already begun transporting equipment into Giga Texas for its battery production line, according to film from Jeff Roberts. Now, it is critical to understand that every dollar spent by Tesla finds its way into the vehicle's cost and, as a result, the price. As a result, the 4680 cells plays an important role in making Tesla's vehicles and business more efficient. Because the 4680 cells are larger, a battery pack requires less of them. This means that inside each pack, there is less overall metal shell and more actual battery anodic cathode material. This is most likely how Tesla was able to achieve a 16% range increase in a 14% cost reduction per kilowatt hour only by changing the battery size and it also means fewer electrical connections, possibly fewer cooling lines, and other benefits. A single 4680 battery is equivalent to 52170 cells, and it looks like Tesla spends less time producing one 4680 cell than a 2070 cell. Furthermore, the 4680 may eliminate the requirement for other vehicle components. The 4680 cells are used in Tesla's structural battery pack as we've already seen. This could be because it is difficult to swap out the batteries inside a structural pack, so these 4680 batteries are projected to last longer and won't need to be replaced as often, allowing the structural pack to function and lowering the overall cost of the vehicle. If these batteries have different temperature qualities and don't require as much heating and cooling, the vehicle's heating and cooling system, for example, could be smaller or use less power, allowing for even more range and hence fewer batteries. Furthermore, if the batteries have more stable chemical qualities, less protective material may be required to keep batteries apart from each other and other vehicle components. Many of the modifications Tesla is making to the vehicle itself could reduce costs. But there are things Tesla is doing in its processes that even Elon Musk would say is foolish or redundant. According to Elon Musk, Tesla is working to get less dump over time. For example, unlike Giga Nevada, Giga Berlin and Giga Texas will have their own local battery production. The batteries are currently manufactured in Sparks, Nevada, but 
the cars are made in Fremont, California. So, the raw materials must be brought to Nevada. The batteries must be put onto trucks, shipped to Fremont, and the trucks must be unloaded using machinery. And this must happen on a regular basis. The batteries may be produced on the same location as the vehicles because the new 4680 production line has a much lower footprint. Battery cell manufacturing at Giga Texas, according to Jota Mayer, is housed in the same building as the rest of the car manufacturer. This means that Tesla can automate the process by linking the battery production system's output directly to the production lines for integrating the batteries and packs into the car. There will no longer be a need to ship batteries, which will lower vehicle costs in ways other than just battery cell advancements. And this is still a result of the 4680's benefits. Furthermore, not only have Tesla's battery operations gotten more efficient, with substantial cost reductions across the board in cell manufacturing processes, but the initial expenditures in equipment and factory space have also seen a massive reduction. Many people are unaware that this has a direct impact on automobile prices. For instance, Giga Nevada was originally estimated to cost $5 billion, with billions more invested afterwards by both Tesla and Panasonic. However, with a cost reduction of 69% each gigawatt hour in the manufacturing, the full gigawatt may be replaced for a fraction of the cost by two 4680 battery lines. A $7 billion factory would now be built for $2 billion, saving nearly $5 billion in capital expenses alone. Every dollar spent by Tesla is reflected in the vehicle's pricing in some way, and plant investments are no exception. When Tesla reports its profitability, this is reflected as depreciation, which is factored into the company's automotive costs. When Tesla buys a factory, the value is added or capitalized on the balance sheet, and each quarter that the factory is in operation, a piece of the initial investment is taken off the balance sheet and is depreciated as an expense on Tesla's income statement. A lower investment cost means less depreciation, or to put it in another way, if Tesla invests the same amount of money on a new factory, say $7 billion, but this new factory can produce significantly more batteries and thus produce significantly more cars, the same amount of depreciation is now distributed over a greater number of vehicles. This allows Tesla to lower the price per vehicle while maintaining their margins because the cost per vehicle is precisely the same. This is scary for competitors that are on the first manufacturing iteration and have all of these inefficiencies and hidden expenses pushing up the price of their vehicles, making them uncompetitive. Look at Volkswagen, an established player with a history of building factories, holding a crisis meeting in which they express surprise that Tesla is able to produce cars three times faster than their electric car plants. And that this rate will likely increase even more at Tesla's new factories with the 4680s. Now, Elon Musk recently indicated that in the future, the vast majority of batteries will be made of iron. Tesla announced a battery day, demonstrating that their high-volume automobiles and stationary storage will use iron-based cathodes. Even a few years ago, this was not really possible for vehicles. The Model 3 was the first of Tesla's vehicles to use CATL, China's largest battery producer, to deliver iron-based or LFP batteries. These are prismatic battery cells. However, given Tesla's varied cathode approach for 4680 battery cells, it is quite likely that the cylindrical 4680 will be used in Tesla's own LFP batteries. LFP batteries have a variety of advantages that make them ideal for electric vehicles, but their biggest disadvantage is their poor energy density. EV makers can only bridge the gap to use LFP batteries if the overall car is efficient enough to reach reasonable ranges, according to Sam Corus of Arc Invest. And as a result, Tesla has been able to increase efficiency gains across all parts of the car, including motors, weight reduction, HVAC, and so on, in order to be able to employ these batteries. And as previously stated, the CATL batteries are prismatic, allowing them to be densely packed in a rectangle battery pack. However, Tesla's 4680 cells are also packed close together and new versions of the Model Y, which will be the first vehicle produced by both Giga Austin and Giga Berlin, 
include many more advancements to increase efficiency such as the aforementioned tablet design and anode-cathode process. Using low-energy density LFP cells even in the Model Y, which is a larger car than the Model 3, may only be practical in these new versions of the vehicles coming from the new Gigafactories, while it hasn't been established which types of cathodes Tesla will be implementing. Low cost is one of the most significant advantages of LFP batteries. It is believed to be 20 to 30 percent cheaper per kilowatt hour, but the materials used, such as iron, is far more plentiful than the nickel used in greater energy density batteries. Thus, prices are more stable and materials are easier to come by. Elon Musk has urged mining companies around the world to produce more nickel for Tesla's higher energy density vehicles, such as the Cybertruck and the Semi, because nickel is more difficult to come by. But iron and phosphorus are abundant, and Tesla has stated that it will mine its own lithium as well as source it from others. Low-cost LFE batteries also suggest that if Tesla's 4680 manufacturing lines are able to attain high-volume productions, they will able to reduce prices again while maintaining their margins. Tesla will continue to use nickel-based cathodes for long-range and high-energy density vehicles. But if Tesla releases a $25,000 vehicle, which they have already announced is in the works as a robo-taxi in the United States and possibly a small hatchback or compact car in China, LFP batteries would make perfect sense and likely be required in order to reduce costs and scale these vehicles to the masses, which is why Tesla is developing them. Furthermore, unlike the nickel-based NCA and NMC batteries widely used in electric vehicles, LFP batteries have a substantially longer life cycle. This means that even after numerous charge cycles, there will be little degradation. This is ideal for Tesla's robo-taxi concept, as robo-taxis will likely be driven more frequently and charged more frequently than conventional cars. But even for the Model 3 or Y, this is proof of a million-mile battery. Three to 4,000 charge cycles might last numerous car lifetimes, and in many situations, even after 4,000 cycles, the vehicle would still retain over 80% of its charge capacity, implying that these batteries will never need to be replaced. Currently, LFE batteries have a number of disadvantages, including poor low temperature efficiency. Tesla, on the other hand, can preheat batteries to the proper temperatures, particularly before going to a charging station, because LFP cells have a lower charging efficiency than nickel-based cells. However, LFP batteries operate well at high temperatures and are significantly less likely than other type of cells to catch fire in the event of a short circuit. As a result, LFP has built-in safety, and Tesla may actually use less shielding material around the batteries because the risk of catching fire is low. In the end, trade-offs are inevitable in engineering, but Tesla's 4680 cells combined with the LFP chemistry offer numerous benefits particularly in terms of cost and material availability, which will be critical in assisting Tesla in scaling its car production to new heights. Tesla has been working hard to mitigate the drawbacks of each cell type, and this will continue to improve over time. In fact, if Tesla can gradually integrate the LFP-based 4680s into more areas of their vehicle lineup, this frees up nickel-based battery supply to scale up semi, Cybertruck, Roadster, and Tesla's other future products, especially since a vehicle like the Semi will require a large number of cells, perhaps the equivalent of 13 Model 3s for a single truck. Tesla indicated on its most recent conference call that it isn't really looking at new goods while there are battery limits, thus ramping up the 4680 cell production line across Tesla's new Gigafactories will help the business scale its current product line while also unlocking new items. The main reason the Tesla Semi hasn't entered the market in large numbers yet is that the company just doesn't have enough cells, and it is not economically feasible to remove cells from the Model 3s for example, which is extremely profitable for Tesla. In order to create the Semi, Tesla could make $650,000 in income by selling 13 Model 3s. However, a Semi may cost up to $180,000. Therefore, it makes sense to keep the batteries with the Model 3 and add excess capacity for new goods. 
As a result, freeing up the battery bottleneck with the 4680 cell production lines could be the key to Tesla's roadmap being realized. Looking at Rivian, Ford, and GM, who all have selections for the electric pickup truck market in the United States, even if Tesla arrives a bit late with a Cybertruck, but actually has the capacity to create them in high volume, that could be very unsettling for the long-serving competitors. Furthermore, many people seem to believe that the 4680 means that a Cybertruck or Semi will finally be produced. But when combined with low-cost LFE batteries and ultra-high volume, Tesla's $25,000 car could arrive sooner than most people think, decimating the gas market and even allowing Tesla to maintain a very high EV market share. Tesla is serious about speeding up the transition to electric vehicles. They appear to be engaging Panasonic to build 4680 cells for Tesla in addition to their own output, even at Tesla's Giga Nevada facility. Despite the fact that they collaborated on the 2170 cells with Panasonic, Panasonic still has several proprietary and trade secrets that keep them apart from even Tesla within the facility. It would be interesting to learn more about their relationship, but Panasonic is starting with a test line for 4680s and will ramp up production if the testing goes well. Meanwhile, even at the Fremont Pilot facility, Tesla appears to be aggressively hiring for battery-related positions. They are gearing up for rapid expansion. To use an analogy, the Dojo training computer is being developed by Tesla's Artificial Intelligence Group in order to enable faster developer iterations for training their whole self-driving software. It's almost as if the manufacturing of the 4680 battery cells will do for autos what Dojo is doing for AI. These batteries will allow Tesla to significantly expand their current lineup, allowing them to develop the end-user goods that they desire faster and with fewer delays, while also opening up new possibilities through the company's visionary roadmap. So, what influence do you expect the 4680 batteries will have on Tesla and its competitors? Please let me know if there are any other benefits for the 4680s that I missed in the comments. And with that, today's video comes to a close. To express your love and support for the video, don't forget to hit the like button if you haven't already. Also, subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button below. While you're at it, click the notification bell next to it to be the first to know when a new video is posted. Thank you for taking the time to watch and we hope you enjoyed yourself. We look forward to seeing you again soon.